Back now with the breaking news on CNN's exclusive reporting that U.S. counterintelligence officials are scrutinizing one of Ivanka Trump's international business deals, according to two sources familiar with the matter. So just to recap, CNN is reporting the FBI has been looking into the negotiations and the financing surrounding Trump International Hotel and Tower in Vancouver, according to a U.S. official and a former U.S. official. And the scrutiny could be a hurdle for the first daughter as she tries to obtain a full security clearance in her role as advisor to President Donald Trump. Now, in any case, it is another potential ethics entanglement for a member of the Trump family. Joining us to talk about it is former FBI and CIA senior official Phil Mudd, Norm Eisen, who served in several uh, capacities in the Foreign Service, and crucially to this conversation is President Obama's White House ethics czar. Also with me again is Jen Psaki. So, Phil, I mean, how big a deal is this? What does it tell you that the FBI, as far as we know, hasn't been able to... Uh, finish up or, you know, that the, that the first daughter has not been able to get a, a full-time security clearance. Well, let's make sure we understand two questions. First, I didn't see anything in the reporting that suggested she did anything wrong. Right. That said, there are some key questions here you've got to ask if you're doing the security clearance. Number one, did she declare it? We know we have a history with White House officials in this administration of not declaring their contacts. Number two, does this company have dealings with the U.S. government and she, is she involved in any of those dealings? Number three, let me give you a simple question, Anderson. What happens when they pick up the phone and they ask for a meeting at the White House? Does she now feel compelled to offer that meeting? And the last question, I think, would be, does the intelligence community, including the FBI, have information on the people she's dealing with that indicate those people are dirty? What does that mean? So I'm not sure she's done anything wrong, but with the complications of her and her husband's sort of financial dealings, they're like the Tylenol twins if you're a security professional. So many questions about whether there's a conflict of interest. Ambassador Eisen, does it raise ethics concerns for you? Uh, Anderson, thanks for having me back. It raises profound ethics concerns. The uh, question uh, of the Vancouver uh, Trump uh, property that's under uh, counterintelligence investigation is only the latest entanglement uh, for Ivanka, for her uh, husband Jared, because we impute these potential conflicts to spouses they apply to the other and for the whole Trump family. It's been a never ending stream of these. And, uh, uh, you know, if in fact there is some problem there, it, rep it may represent a conflict that should require her to step away from certain issues. And the, uh, uh, the, the behavior of the Trumps is more like that of a royal family than of uh, modern day elected officials between the conflicts and the nepotism. And of course, uh, the president himself has the largest conflicts of all hanging on to his businesses. Another troubling development. Jen, I mean, the idea that America was getting Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump as part of a best and brightest package deal along with President Trump, it seems to be at least in part a package deal of ethics questions and security clearance hurdles. That's true. And you never want to hire someone you can't fire, which is why there's nepotism laws in part. Um, but the other fact uh, that hasn't been out there that much is that when you fill out your security clearance forms, typically your spouse's contacts and their financial ties are also taken into account. So we don't know uh, what her security clearance is, exactly what the status is, but there's no doubt that she would be, her security clearance would probably be impacted by everything happening with Jared as well. And if you look at this circumstance, Stance, it's actually pretty surprising reading the story that she hasn't been pulled into some of the reporting. She's been pretty low key uh, as it relates to the Mueller investigation. Doesn't mean she's done anything wrong, but there, she's been around for a lot of the key moments. Uh, and as a for, as a daughter, um, that would be expected. But that's another place where it's a bit of a conflict to be a senior advisor and a daughter in this case. Phil, I mean, this may be a dumb question because the president doesn't undergo a background check in the way that the people, other people, who work in the White House do, but. <laughs> Uh, you know, President uh, Trump, when he was a candidate, would s often said Hillary Clinton would not have been able to pass a background check. Given that, you know, Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump have not gotten a full time clearance, would the president, if he had to, actually be able to pass a background check at this point? I don't think he'd be able to. And in effect, he is undergoing a background check. That's a check done by Robert Mueller. And we know Robert Mueller's looking into the financial dealings, not only of the kids, but potentially of the president. Uh, let me make this even clearer. Let we're making this like it's incredibly complicated. It's not. Let me cut to the chase, Anderson. When I was in government, I could not accept a gift from any foreign government more than 200 bucks. That's 200 American dollars. If the reports are accurate, Jared Kushner is negotiating 
uh, mortgage deals in excess of hundreds of millions of dollars in the White House. When I was in government, I was capped at how many meals I could accept from one of my friends from a foreign security service. And we're talking about people in the White House negotiating deals with foreign governments, including potentially in Malaysia and elsewhere, while they're in the White House. We look at this like this is the normal activity of people who are the children of the president. The comparison to what an everyday government official would have to go through is night and day. I would be on my ass so fast if I did any of this, the light wouldn't be out by the time I'd be out the door. Ambassador, I want to put up something that Jen tweeted today saying, quote, for context, Norm Eisen expected me to justify that I had prior relationships with people who gave me wedding presents when I got married in 2010 while working at the White House. No one knows ethics rules better. She was referring to your comments on Kushner family business loans. But what happens next in the process and, and why were you trying to deprive Jen of a new coffee maker or whatever it was that <laughs> exactly, she got? Exactly, Norm. <laughs> uh, well, I, uh, Anderson, uh, when I uh, attended the Harvard Law School, I did not expect that someday I would be going over Jen's wedding registry <laughs> as my most important but legal responsibilities, but we did. And I'll tell you why we did that. It was the opposite of the Trump administration. In the Obama administration, the president believed that tone at the top matters and you need to set a tone of integrity. And if you have a president who is hoovering up foreign government uh, cash and benefits all over the world, who's bringing his children in and uh, they're doing deals and there's a cloud of conflict hanging over it all, potential constitutional issues, um, that sets a tone to everyone and you very quickly get into the uh, people in the cabinet saying, why can't I do it too? And you get Dr. Price's uh, uh, flights and you get Ben Carson's $31,000 conference table and all of the, uh, the other uh, venality. That's not what the American people signed up for, Anderson. They want a president and a government that will serve the public, not serve yourself like a, a uh, you know, an all-you-can-eat buffet. It's just wrong. It stinks. Jen, I mean, do you find it all encouraging that the president hasn't just unilaterally, unilaterally bypassed the protocols and given his daughter and son-in-law the highest level of security clearance? I mean, he can show, you know, Jared Kushner or Ivanka Trump his da president's daily brief if he wants, even if they're not, you know, cleared for it. Well, he can. Now, it is uh, currently that is the case, but he can do a waiver on a case by case basis. So if he wants Jared to be the point of contact with Saudi Arabia on an oil deal, he can do that. So we'll have to watch and see how many waivers he gives in this case um, and how it's impacted. It is interesting, as you said, that he didn't give an overall waiver or didn't stop Kelly from acting because it shows he wasn't ready to step in even for his son-in-law, even though he's supposed to be basically his chief diplomat from the White House. Yeah.